Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, Senior Currency Strategist with Daily FX. Today is Thursday, July 20th, 2017. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. We're looking at a day in which the calendar is much more active. We've already seen the Bank of Japan rate decision in Australian employment reports overnight. Now we're looking down the barrel at the European Central Bank rate decision due out at 7.45 Eastern, 11.45 GMT. Likewise, Mario Draghi's press conference this morning will be at 8.30 Eastern, 12.30 GMT. I'll be covering the rate decision itself live starting at 7.30 Eastern, 11.30 GMT in the Daily FX live trading room. You can always access that by hanging over to the front page of the website and selecting the webinar entry box right there on the side. Click register now and it'll bring you to the page to set you up for today's ECB rate decision. Uh, but speaking of today's ECB rate decision, this seems like it is a procedural or a placeholder meeting for the euro itself. And I say that because this is one of those intermeetings in which we don't have new staff economic projections from the ECB. So the odds in which that they do something are rather low. I think the euro today is waiting for the ECB to keep rates unchanged, but they're also waiting to see what happens with the press conference more importantly because there's going to be no rate change no new staff projections what Draghi says will carry the most uh, a weight today if you will um, with the ECB quiet for some time about the FX channel it's been several months if not over a year since they've mentioned it the, e, uh, the euro has been given some room to rally against its peers in recent months uh, the euro's strength may only be tolerated for so long the ECB's technical assumption for euro dollar in 2017 is 108 and right now it's trading at 115.08 brent oil the energy input the ecb bases their inflation forecast around is forecast at 51 dollars 60 cents per barrel for 2017 and energy prices have been underperforming the euros or the ecb forecast by about five percent coming into this week so we're starting to look at a situation where a few more months of a stronger euro weaker energy prices and persistent underperformance for inflation um, and you may have a scenario where it's easy to envision the ECB taking issue with the market's hawkish interpretation of the policy adjustments being made. For now it seems officials are suggesting that a step down in the QE program could come as soon as September but I guess my point is it's not going to be this week so due to the fact that the ECB is one of the many central banks that have fallen into this predictable pattern of when policy action is most likely to arrive only when these forecasts are updated I think it means it's going to be September or December when any significant issues are raised. Um, I would think that right now, if we see some concern issued by ECB President Mario Draghi in today's press conference about the strength of the euro, about the tightening of financial conditions in the euro area, something that he wants to avoid, um, it's possible that we see some profit taking in the euro. I say that because when we take a look at what's going on in market positioning right now, coming into this week, we saw that the CFTC's COT report showed us that 83.8 uh, thousand net long contracts were being held by speculators in the futures market. That was the highest since the week ended May 3rd, 2011. So right now the market is net short the dollar, net long the euro. If we do see a move lower today, I would think that it's not necessarily the end of the uptrend, but rather just some profit taking within it. We have to make some serious technical damage today in order to consider that the uptrend that Euro has been enjoying uh, is over. I would suggest that we'd have to see something uh, in the neighborhood of a breakdown below 113, which to me seems like a far cry. Um, Euro dollar itself is probably a sell the rally type of opportunity as I do think the dollar sentiment is an extreme and ultimately as I've been saying we're looking for one last swing higher in the euro up towards 116 this may have been it um, concurrently if you're looking at other euro crosses pairs that are probably more readily available for a move higher would be something like euro yen the bank of Japan last night came out and kept policy unchanged but they noted that they were delaying when they believe they would hit their inflation target inflation in japan is only 0.4 percent year over year and with energy prices dipping lower again chances are in combination with what has been a period of yen strength versus the dollar that inflation is tempered there for the foreseeable future so um, right now with the boj 
setting itself aside from all these other central banks where many are getting into this hawkish positioning, the Fed, the BOE, the BOC, the ECB, the BOJ is making it clear that it is not close to withdrawing stimulus or moving away from the lower bound at any point anytime soon. If the euro is going to rally today, euro yen is best positioned for it, in my opinion. Something that we're watching in the very short term here has been this uh, 8 13 21 EMA envelope. We've been riding it higher since June 16th. We've had no closes below that uh, 13 EMA. We had a test of it, no close below the other day as well. I would think that this could be the support region that we're looking into for the next bounce in price. And certainly, if we're talking about support off the recent lows, we are coming rather close to it, depending upon um, how you measure it. I'd be looking for price to hold above 128.20 if we're going to see a more significant bounce moving forward. And it looks like we could be holding up above there today. Uh, a euro cross that I'm not crazy about right now would be euro pound. I think that there's a lot of noise in between the euro and the pound. Pound falling back uh, uh, today, of course, providing the majority of the move in euro pound itself. Um, right now, ultimately, euro pound, I think, is working with a lot of forces that would suggest that it's due to grind sideways. So if we see rallies in the pair, I wouldn't necessarily be getting on board. It's a very sloppy chart. Certainly the, the nature of the uptrend uh, since the May low um, has been broken. It's uh, not quite as bullish as it once was. And the recent rejection of trying to retake that trend line um, is rather significant, in my opinion. So I, I prefer to look at other euro crosses today. Again, if we're going to see euro strength, I like euro yen. If we're going to see some euro weakness, it's worth looking against some of those commodity currencies. If it's euro Aussie, which is getting a little bit of a bounce right now after that employment data. If it's something like euro CAD, <coughs> excuse me, which the Canadian dollar has been doing quite well. Um, if you see a weaker euro and Canadian dollar is able to benefit from it, I'd be looking for a breakdown below 144.80, the swing hold that we had from last week on July uh, 12th. Um, again, focusing back on the Bank of Japan, as we've covered the majority of the euro crosses ahead of the ECB today, the BOJ is more or less trying to make sure that the market knows that it too will not be joining the course of central banks that will be looking to um, raise rates here in the short term. And depending upon how you look at it, this may be the start of breaking this period of yen strength over the last several days. Uh, when you take a look at a trend line from the recent highs, you can see that price action is just starting to settle above the two recent swing levels, depending upon how aggressive you want to measure it. Uh, from my point of view, I think ultimately we're going to need to see a, a, a burst higher in U.S. yields if we're going to see dollar yen recover on a sustainable basis. Right now, we take a look at the 10-year yield. You see that's been meandering around flat the last few hours, uh, the last few days, really the last two days. And if, if we're going to see the dollar yen is going to move higher, it really needs to be bolstered not only by what's going on on the Japanese side of things, but also on the dollar side of things. And higher U.S. yields would be that condition right now. It doesn't necessarily look like that U.S. yields are ready to burst higher. So I wouldn't put too much stock in a dollar yen rebound just yet. Beyond that, we were talking earlier about the Australian uh, employment data that was coming up overnight. We saw that, that those figures, uh, excuse me here, um, were uh, fairly mixed, not as good as they w could have been. 14K versus 15K expected unemployment rate on hold. Um, Part-time jobs greater than full-time jobs. Participation rate up. So all things considered, a decent report, but not as good as what could have been. And I guess people were expecting some more fire after what's been a really uh, uh, torrid run for uh, those labor figures. Ultimately, seeing some profit taking here in Aussie dollar. And we get this four-hour key reversal bar worth keeping an eye on as we make our way through these charts. Um, worth noting that since July 11th, price has been holding this 8.13.21 EMA envelope on the four hour time frame, uh, and we could be coming back into a support region right now between the 13 and 21, just as we did um, back on July 17th. Beyond that, again, all focus is on the euro today. Dollar index will be incidental to what's ever going on in the euro, as it is comprised of 57.6% of the euro. So if you're trading the dollar, pay attention to Mario Draghi's press conference at 8.30 Eastern, 12.30 uh, a GMT in particular, that's going to be way more market moving than the policy decision itself, which is 45 minutes prior. Uh, nevertheless, we will be covering uh, the ECB uh, press conference today and the rate decision today starting 7.30 Eastern, 11.30 GMT, again, in the Daily Effects live trading room. You can simply go over to the front page of the website, look for that live data coverage ECB rate decision on the right-hand side, and click register now to join uh, and sign up ahead of time. If I don't have a chance to speak to you before then, good luck trading the rest of today. Uh, if I don't speak to you before the end of the week, good luck trading the rest of the week. It's only two days left. So um, if I don't speak to you before, then have a great weekend. If you want to get in touch with me, you can always reach out to me through the Daily Fix Real-Time News Feed, Stock Touch, and Twitter, at CVEC UFX. 
or you can email me cvecchio at dailyeffects.com. See you at the webinar later on today.